and we do 250 steps twice a week. So it's 500 steps total for the week. And that number comes from previous literature that talks about the amount of time spent grazing by geese. And then I did observations here in the Delta of geese and how many steps they take while they're grazing. <laughs> So these are what we're using for our trampoline treatments. They're artificially constructed brant feet, obviously a little longer than a regular brant leg, but that's just for my convenience. We constructed the feet out of like a thin plastic sheeting that's doubled up and ideally it's gonna give a little flex when you place it on the ground. It should somewhat simulate a goose foot, although we acknowledge it's not a perfect system. <laughs> And then they are weighted using just large nails that we had available from another part of the experiment. And they're weighted somewhere in the neighborhood of about 1,100 grams, which we're estimating as in the range of an average brand. It is amazing that these little two pound birds running around the Delta can have such a large impact on the vegetation, specifically through trampling and grazing in these areas. This is plot one. So within plot one, we're simulating three herbivory pressures that are common here in the Delta. So we're simulating grazing, we're simulating trampling, and then we're also simulating fecal deposition. Each one of these plots kind of represents a different one. Our first one is a simulated control that receives all three pressures. Our second one receives only grazing pressure. Third receives only trampling pressure. Fourth receives only fecal deposition. And then the fifth plot is our negative control, which receives no pressures at all. It's based off of observations made in the ongoing larger experiment. So that's been running for two seasons prior to this one. And they've noticed a lot of change in the different plots based on how heavily they're grazed. They're noticing different things and they wanted to separate those effects out and try and get a better idea of what's causing them. We're isolating these effects to look at how much input all of these different behaviors have on vegetation and nitrogen and carbon exchange. So the biggest question is, which of these three pressures, so our grazing, our trampling, and our, our fecal deposition, are affecting the carbon to nitrogen ratios in these plants? The more nitrogen that's available in relation to the carbon seems to be the better forage for the geese. It seems to keep the plants more soft as opposed to like a woody carbonous material. And so they seem to graze on that more preferentially. The geese make up a, a really important force on the landscape and one thing that's interesting about the way they graze is they actually focus their grazing on specific locations on the landscape and we refer to them as grazing lawns and you can really tell where these grazing lawns are because the vegetation is much much shorter there's no dead material because they're really picking everything out and those areas also have the additional nutrients being added from defecation by continually grazing on the subspath lawns, they're able to increase both the abundance and the quality of forage necessary for them to thrive out here. And it's this feedback, this positive feedback by geese grazing on vegetation, the vegetation responding, becoming tastier and more nutritious for the birds that create this really dynamic feedback system. One of the things that we're looking at is what happens if the timing of that grazing and the response of the vegetation to warming is discoupled or is altered in some way and how does that change the abundance and quality of the forage for the birds.